Senator Dastyari. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr Acting Deputy President, I, I rise to propose a conundrum that's actually been, been troubling me for some time. And my question is this. What is it with the cigar-chomping liberal ideologues from Sydney's North Shore and their desire to ruin life for everyone in New South Wales, indeed, for the rest of the country. The North Shore of Sydney's produced a string of politicians who think the public office is merely there to be a fast track into private boardrooms, that the country's woes are best solved by lighting up another stogie and slugging it to pensioners, to students, the unemployed, the sick, and to worst of all, missing out the Deputy President, slugging it to Peppa Pig. Look at these, uh, look at these North Shore Tories. Eh? Even while one of their own is talking about the end of the age of entitlement, another North Shore Liberal thinks he's entitled to sell off whatever public assets he can get his hands on. Of course, I'm talking about Mike Baird, friends, a modern day aristocrat running the state as if he's a member of the court of Louis XVI. And you can just imagine him growing up, sitting around the fireplace, listening to the wise old men who think they run the world, chatting about how to manage the little people. It's reflected in everything he does. The voters want decent transport. His solution is to take something from them so they don't get too uppity. I'll give you this. It's a Genghis Khan level of gall to sell off the electricity network in New South Wales and claim it's got anything, anything to do with public transport. So Joe Hockey talks about the end of the age of entitlement, but the kind of entitlement that the North Shore Liberals know is that once they've reached high office, they feel entitled to sell off whatever public assets they can get their hands on. Why? Why? because a few of their mates feel entitled to make a buck out of the assets that belong to the rest of us. That's where the problem with entitlement in this country really lies. Friends, the electricity network is simply the latest asset, the latest asset that they want to pilfer fr from the public. It's wrong and it shouldn't be allowed to happen. What is it about them that makes them so intent, so intent on acting with such greed whenever they reach high office. It's a question that's been troubling me. It's a question that's been troubling Graham Kelly, the General Secretary of the United Services Union, the union that I'm proudly a member of. A union whose members are facing a very uncertain future as the New South Wales government shops electricity grid to bankers and investors just so they can make a buck out of it for the rest of us. So to answer these questions, I want to look at the big lie, the big lie at the heart of this plan. And that's the lie that, our, that selling the power grid will actually lower prices. It's a fraud. It's a furphy. That's the one lie I'm sure that everyone in Mike Baird's office is in a guard chuckles about around the fire as they sit around refining their message, drinking their 1959 Grange. Privatising electricity infrastructure will result in profits for the new shareholders, the bankers and investors, who are already rubbing their hands together in anticipation and gleefully backing the Premier. Mr President, if the New South Wales Liberals sell the electricity grid, then consumers will end up rubbing their hands too. But unlike the bankers, they'll be rubbing them to keep warm. Every time in history the electricity grid's been sold, it's resulted in higher prices. And frankly, this makes sense. Why would the neighbours of Mike Baird, of Joe Hockey, of Tony Abbott and Barry O'Farrell, the same people who bump into each other at Millennium Forum fundraisers or the Avondale Golf Course in Pimble, in the boardrooms of Milsons Point, be so desperate to get our hands on our poles and wires if they weren't going to make an extra buck out of it? Does anyone really believe that what they're actually saying is this? Look, here. We'll take that profitable asset off your hands, but there's nothing in it for us. Mr Acting Deputy President, a significant number of households in New South Wales already struggle with their electricity costs. 
about almost 25,000 families were disconnected in the last financial year from power. Pensioners, students, battlers. These people don't tend to live in the leafy North Shore cul-de-sacs. They're not the type of people that go to the big fundraisers. You know, they're not the people who d engage day to day in, in conservative politics. But Mr. President, it's not just the consumers who will suffer if the grid's sold. Jobs will go too. Many sparkies began their, their working lives in apprenticeships with our state-owned utilities. Trade unions, including the United Services Union and the Electrical Trades Union, and in particular Unions New South Wales, can be rightly proud of the service they've provided to these young Australians, and they in turn have provided to the people of Australia. These are the men and women who drive alongside our poles and wires, checking for wear and tear, clearing away the trees, replacing the transformers. These maintenance jobs may not be as glamorous as a working lunch at Rockpool, quaffic vintage Shiraz, especially when a southerly storm is blowing. But these are the jobs that keep our houses warm, our streets well lit, and our businesses operating. If the experience of our neighbours is anything to go by, we already know what happens to the public grid maintained by these trained professional linesmen and engineers when it's sold for private profit. Maintenance jobs will be amongst the first to go. Our friends in New Zealand, in Victoria and South Australia have been through it, and they're paying even more every time they turn on a switch. But as their networks have deteriorated, they've also suffered the indignity the indignity of blackouts. The experience of privatisation in Victoria is especially concerning. Power blackouts increasing by 32%. Mr Acting Deputy President, we live in a wealthy first world nation. I've got two young daughters and I will never support any measure that could see the power cut off to our own home. But we know from experience, we know from experience, it's not as likely that my home in central Sydney will be affected, and certainly not those harbourside mansions that light up the North Shore. No, Mr President, the people who will most likely end with the blackouts will be the residents of rural and regional New South Wales and those in emerging, new and growing communities. You know, I have to uh, give credit to the National Party in New South Wales who recognise the impact of privatisation will have on the people who live beyond Sydney's North Shore. Indeed, they've stood up to block the sale of essential energy. But what about the rest of us? The National Party knows it's no good. The voters of Sydney know it's no good. The only people who think that this is a good idea are the handful of people who will take ownership. I call on the member for Manly and the Premier of New South Wales and his Liberal Party colleagues to take this proposal off the table, abandon it altogether to acknowledge the very real concerns of the people of New South Wales, the very real impact that will have on low-income families, the destructive impact that privatisations had on our neighbours. I call on the Premier to stop calling a scare campaign when people rightly outline, rightly outline the concerns that they have with this proposal. I'm proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who have stood up and fought against this proposal. And frankly, it is lazy, it is predictable, and it is wrong to call it anything other than the truth that it's being campaigned for. I call on the Premier to stop spreading nonsense that privatisation will lower electricity prices, because frankly, that is nothing more than a lie. Thank you, Senator Destia.